Joining us now, he is entering his third season on the Utah Ute staff. He just got recently promoted to the associate head coach. I speak of DJ Gasso joining us here on In the Circle. How's that new title sound? <laughs> that's good. It's a blessing, that's for sure. So I'm very appreciative of it. Let's talk about that first. What about your kind of what led to that to getting that promotion? I know we had Coach Hogan last year spoke highly of you and what you brought to the program. Uh, what does that mean to you? Get that promotion there and now and that title. Yeah, I mean it means a ton. Uh, I it honestly starts with Coach A, right? Um, she's been there for me, uh, for my wife, you know, just our family. She's the most loyal and helpful and just nice person that you can really meet. Uh, and, and she's been great to us. And you know, title means a ton. I know. I don't know. As a coach, you just you're still coaching, you know. But it definitely helps the resume and. I remember we actually, I got hired over Zoom, kind of like this, because uh, it was yep. COVID, right? So I didn't get to come up to Utah and do the whole interview process. Um, but one thing that she did say when she asked about career, goal, career goals is, you know, one day I do want to be a head coach. Um, and she has a great track record of assistant coaches going on and, and being head coaches. So that was definitely one thing that I remember her telling me from the very start. So uh, I promotion means a ton to my family and I, and you know, I'm very grateful for Coach A uh, for everything she's done for us. What's it been like working for her? It's been great. I mean, you know, I we're definitely different personalities, and I think that's where, you know, Coach Paige comes in, uh, Paige Parker, and we, we all, like, think differently and um, see things differently, which is great because there's so many different perspectives, uh, but she knows the game. She's been around it forever. You know, she was inducted to the Utah Hall of Fame last year. Uh, my wife and I were, be, were able to go to that. So, you know, she's she's taught us a lot. Um, not only things X's and O's on the field, but, you know, how to treat people the right way, how to, you know, put yourself in their position, you know, see things from a different angle. Uh, and I think, you know, the way that I'm able to relate uh, to our players um, and the growth I think I've, I've had the past uh, couple years you know, uh, goes out to Coach A for kind of making me see things a little different because there's times, you know, I probably can be a little stubborn sometimes, you know. So, uh, but no, she's great. She she lets Paige and I really grow as coaches. Um, she's not overbearing. She lets us coach. She lets us grow. She lets us fail uh, and learn, you know, and I think you can't uh, ask for anything better from the boss. How are you different today as a coach than you were when you first arrived? Yeah, I think when I first got here, it was very, hey, this is kind of what I've known. This is how I was born and raised. Let's apply it right away. Um, you know, you got to build trust. You got to build relationships. You got to you know the athlete. You know, you got to know kind of where the program's at. Um, and I think that's one big thing that I learned is, you know, taking a step back a little bit and you know, having more a structure of a way of how to apply certain things that I can carry over and, and you know, really make things my own. I think everything that I've learned from, uh, you know, Oklahoma and mom, JT, like, you know, it's all incredible. It, it works. It's great. Uh, but, you know, I think making it my own and I've been a lot of different places and uh, have learned from a lot of different coaches. So, you know, really taking everything I've learned throughout my playing career, throughout my coaching career, uh, and being able to apply it to a team that, you know, not just hears it, but believes it, trusts in it. Uh, I think that's kind of been the biggest thing that I've learned the past couple of years is how to apply that and not just, hey, here's the, all the information. It's like, hey, how do we go about this and how can we as a unit uh, be the most effective? We look back at last year. You really finished strong last year. Made a run late last year. Beat UCLA. Made a push. Came down to that Oregon State series. If you win that series, maybe you're in the NCAA's. You were with a, you know one of the first four out as it was. Yeah. Take me back first. Uh, your thoughts when you reflect on last year. I think it was um, it was a testament to at least have a watch party. You know, uh, the seniors never really had that. Um, so, so to have the opportunity to say like, Hey, we got a chance to get in, in this is huge. I think that's kind of the first step for us. Um, it was heartbreaking. You know, we really thought having the strength of schedule that we had, um, the finish that we had, 
you know, hey, we could, you know, maybe have a shot at this. Uh, but when you kind of look back in the season, you know, there's a couple weeks where we just didn't play well. Um, but I think towards the end of the season, our team really started to believe, like, hey, we can beat some of the top teams in the country. Uh, and that's the thing about the Pac-12. And it's just, it's, it's challenging. It's difficult. You know, you go to Oregon State, who you think, hey, you know, made the postseason. No, they made the World Series, you know, like uh, in Arizona that didn't do great in the Pac-12 last year. Makes the World Series. So, you know, especially coming this year, you you see the teams that maybe we lost to or beat the series or, I mean, we were had a lot of one-run games against these really good teams. And you go back and, you know, especially this fall, it wasn't, I guess, as much X's and O's. You need to hit better, throw better, feel better. But it's like, hey, you got to believe that you can make this play. You know, when the game's on the line, you're up against one of the best teams in the country, you know how to catch the ball. You know how to throw the ball. You know how to hit it. It's like, you know, do you believe that you're going to get the job done uh, you know, when you're called to do it? So I think this fall has been extremely helpful for us um, on the mindset perspective. Uh, you know, and I think everyone's really looking forward to this next season and, and getting after it. I mean, the competition has been through the roof. Um, but I think last year we were able to start believing uh, and, you know, having that last weekend of, hey, you win, you're in. I mean, that's a postseason feel right there, you know. So um, we, they haven't really, uh, you know, had the feelings of, hey, I'm kind of nervous. I got those jitters. If I don't do good, season's over. Uh, so that's a blessing uh, in itself. And I think that there's, you know, a lot of returners that, you know, yeah, it wasn't a postseason experience. You know, we didn't go to the regionals and do all that. But uh, the feelings that you get in those games, we got to have that late in the season. And I think that's going to be super beneficial for us going forward. Right. In a weird way, you were in the tournament. It was just a weekend earlier. It's something we may not see again in the Pac-12, as we'll talk later about the new changes to the league with the Pac-12 tournament being added. Take me through that last weekend. Did you all felt like this was a winner get in series? Give me the what was the approach like going into that weekend? And then after the series, uh, did you feel like, oh, we blew our chance? Do we still have a chance? What Because that was unique because I, yeah. I, that was watching that very closely and. Who's to, you know, like I said, if I think if you win, maybe they're out. Maybe with some help, you're both still in. Yeah. We'll never I, know, but it was close, obviously, based on what the committee, uh, as we would find out later. Yeah, no, it was, it was, that was the mindset. Hey, whoever wins this series is getting in. I don't know if they're going to add two Pac-12 teams in, um, but we knew if we won the series, we're a game over 500. If we take one, we're right at 500. If we get swept, we're under 500, so we don't get a chance. We're like, hey. Uh, look, I mean, it's not just win one. Let's win the series. And that first game, I mean, geez, tie, I mean, that was one of the most incredible games I've ever seen because, you know, getting walked off. I mean, it was a terrible feeling. But, you know, just the whole game, going to extras, uh, having to face Maison, one of the, I mean, probably if not one of the best pitchers in the country, very, very underrated, uh, it felt like, from media coverage and stuff. You know, she was legit. And, you know, having taken a lead, uh, coming back in the seven, tying it up, going the extras, I, it was it was definitely a game I'll, I'll never forget. Uh, it didn't end the way that we wanted. It was very, very crushing for us. Uh, but, you know, that's the difference. And I think us getting into the postseason was maybe that series. Uh, so we can take a lot from it. Uh, I think we learned a lot from it. Uh, and. We're really, really, really excited uh, going forward uh, from all those experiences from last year. Oregon State would end up making the run to the World Series, as did Arizona. Did that make you feel better, worse, and perhaps a little pride from a Pac-12 standpoint of saying, hey, you know, we should get some of the more benefit of the doubt as far as getting to the tournament. We're, we're a great league, just like other leagues tend to get the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that's – Always a tough thing, you know. You fin you see where we finished in the Pac-12, and uh, it's right there with some of the teams that made the World Series, you know. So it, it definitely helps our confidence standpoint in the sense of, hey, look at the teams that you're beating. Look how they do in the postseason. I mean, uh, you, you go and beat a Washington. I mean, postseason host Arizona State host, you know, Stanford. It was, you know, we uh, took one from them, but. Yeah, that's the Pac-12. It's very, very tough competitive conference. 
you got to bring it every single day or you're going to lose. Uh, and, and that's what's great is, you know, you you go through the trenches through, the, you know, Pac-12 season and it prepares you for the postseason. I think last year was just a testament to, uh, you know, all the great teams in the Pac-12. Um, and, yeah, I, I think them doing great in the, in the postseason definitely – helps that argument, but, you know, we don't really think about that. We, we're there to play. We're there to win the game. You know, some of those things are out of our control. And, you know, looking back just in our minds, the way we think about it is, hey, there's games that we lost that we didn't have to have in other people's hands. You know, we, we could have controlled our own destiny and we didn't. And that's something that we can uh, take from. So. so how was this fall? You mentioned the message. You got a lot of players coming back from that experience. Is there a chip on the shoulder, unfinished yeah. business? What's kind of what was the tone like from the from the fall and the message standpoint? Yeah, I mean, I it's been different in the sense of they came uh, back this fall ready. Um, in previous falls, you know, there's a couple weeks you got to get adjusted, come back. You know, everyone's thrown again. You could tell they really worked uh, hard this summer, um, ready to go this fall because they do have a chip on their shoulder. They do believe that. You know, we can be a team that right now we haven't made the postseason in a few years. I think that's just the big first step is making the postseason and having the confidence that, hey, whoever we're playing against, wherever we have to go, it doesn't matter if we play our best. We can, you know, play against uh, any of the best teams in the country. So, yeah, this fall was really good. Um, I think we got extremely vulnerable. Uh, I think, you know, some of our team, you know, we were able to open up a lot. Uh, and, and tell each other how we were feeling and um, we kind of let let coach page kind of lead the way of on like page coach page talks right so uh every few weeks we'd have meetings and there'd be kind of a message behind it some didn't have anything to do with softball some did um and there was definitely some spots where the kids were able to open up and we really got closer um as a team and i think everyone respects each other uh, respects each other's opinion uh and now i think with you know how close we've uh, gotten this fall. I think in the spring, you'll be able to see a Utah team that's, you know, want to go to battle for each other, no matter who's hitting, no matter who's pitching, who's starting, who's not starting, you know, it's going to be one team that's, that's really getting after it and, and wanting to win. Let's talk about the offense. You run the offense, obviously. First, how do you feel about where the offense is as you enter your third year? Cause I'm sure there was a transitional period, players learning you, you learning them and stuff. Yeah. Where do you feel the offense is? You improved 22 points batting average last year among many category improvements from last year. And even, you know, from two years ago, we had big improvements as well. Mm -hmm. Do you feel where you, you're at where you thought you would be? Do you think you're ahead of schedule? Where do you feel you're at, you're at offensively right now? I think that uh, we're more competitive. You know, I, I think for me, it's, it's more of a belief factor. Uh, because like I said, you go in the Pac-12, you're facing the best pitchers in the country week after week. Uh, there's not really a, a rest. And so, you know, having hitters that are confident throughout the conference season is very difficult. Um, and, you know, at, at, at OU, I wish I would have listened to my brother a little bit more. Right? I, I wish I could have taken some more things from him. I, I uh, was always kind of working with defense and I was pretty stubborn and maybe argued with them a time or two or something, you know, so kind of regret that a little bit, but I was more of like research and did stuff uh, from the infield perspective. So, you know, I, I never really got a chance to say, Hey, this is my system. This is a way that kind of, I think it can really work uh, until I got here. So it's kind of been a learning, uh, a learning progress for me as well. And I think this third year, uh, everyone knows what we need to do. Everyone knows, uh, you know, our processes, uh, our routines, uh, what our mindset needs to be like. So I think this year will be, you know, extremely fun. Uh, and I think it will be extremely competitive in a sense that, you know, everyone knows what it needs to look like, what we need to do. Uh, and I think it'll be really fun to see from the dugout because, you know, at the end of the day, it's, I'm trying to put the hitters in the best position that they possibly can be in uh, to be successful. I'm kind of their biggest fan. Right? I can't really do much, but, you know, make them super confident, make them believe in themselves. And, uh, you know, I, I think that this offensive unit this year will, will definitely 
kind of see the progress uh, that I've wanted to see from day one. How much of your offense philosophy, you mentioned it, is because people from the outside will say, well, your offense is probably some philosophy similar at, like Oklahoma and your brother and obviously, you know, but how much of it is from your own experience, from your playing days and how much maybe you picked up from other stuff? Just take me through it as you've kind of, you mentioned, you've learning it on the fly as far as your philosophy and things. Just take me through that growth as a coach, as you were thinking about, I want to be a coach. You obviously had some things you were probably writing down uh, as far as your own philosophies. Yeah, I got a little handy dandy notebook sitting in my backpack with some notes from, you know, not just my mom, my brother, Coach Rocha, Missy, but um, all the baseball coaches that I played under. I played at, uh, you know, a couple junior colleges, uh, you know, a couple four years. And so everyone had a different way of doing it. Um, there are some things I liked, there are some things I didn't like. And, you know, that was one thing my dad always told me is, hey, everywhere you go, take notes. Uh, you know, ask the coaches, every single coach that I played for knew that, you know, my dream was to be a coach. And so I'd always go into the office and pick the brains, you know, or uh, sit right by them if I wasn't playing and just ask them questions and always kind of want to be a student of the game. Um, but I don't know, it, it, it's tough because it's hard to just take everything you learn because I think JT does, you know, he's the best of the best uh, in our business, I believe. And I still try and get them to hit with me in the cage when I go back. Because my birthday is in, like, January. So I'm like, hey, let's go in the cages. There you go. I still, still won't do it. You know, I'm, I'm still trying to convince them. So if you can help me with that, that would be incredible. But, uh, you know, I, I can't – you can't just take everything and just – it happens like that. I think one thing that I've really learned throughout this process is you got to know the athlete. You got to know the player. Uh, so maybe – trying to hit home runs all the time or, you know, really getting behind balls and for power isn't going to match up with some of the players on our team's skill set. Um, so, you know, there are some times in junior college where it was like, hey, hard and flat up the middle, which, you know, I don't know if that has a ton of basis with a lot of hitting coaches nowadays. Uh, but for some of the kids on our team, that's a great mindset for them to have. You know, some other kids, it's uh, it's different. So, I think that's been the biggest adjustment and, and really cool thing that I've seen is, you know, each person, uh, you know, on our team, especially from a hitting perspective, they move different. They think different. Uh, the way they're uh, taught are different. The way I need to speak to them, the way I need to do drills with them or, uh, you know, make adjustments with them. It's all different. So tailoring it to their personality, to their skill set, to the way their body moves is something I've been, you know, really diving into. And I think this last fall and last couple of years, uh, we've been progressing and progressing and progressing. I think this year we'll, we'll definitely see the benefits of it. Let's talk about some of the offensive players you got. I mean, obviously, when you look at last year, you're looking at a, like Lisa Bonstrom, 11 homers, 44 RBIs, 376 average. Uh, what makes her so great? And then just talk about your offense as a whole this year and some of the names that people can kind of remember that might step in. Because you, your offense was unique. You had some power, but you also had speed. You had a bit of a balance there. Yeah, and that's the thing, I think, you know, our offense is different because we have a lot of speed and our field is 225 to left and right and 235 to center, which you don't really see very often. So you hit a gap, it's a triple, it's not a double. Uh, and it's a, it's a really big field. So having speed is definitely, you know, the type of offense that we have. It's not necessarily one that has just a ton of power. Uh, but that's where kind of Bonstrom comes in. You know, she does have a lot of power. <laughs> I think, you know, our first year... She was up close to 15 home runs, I would say. Uh, but definitely someone that uh, can change a game with one swing of that bat. Um, her and uh, Juju or um, Julia, she transferred from Michigan and had, you know, a career year this last year. And, you know, she's – those two kids are, are probably, uh, you know, the kids that have the most power. Uh, they both were first team pack uh, last year. So, you know, we're really looking forward to them getting after it this season. I think – you know, they're going to be on a mission this spring, and it will be fun to watch. But um, Haley Denning, uh, she's one of the fastest kids I've, <laughs> I think I've ever seen. And sometimes you need to slow her down, but there's no slowing that kid down. You know, she's just running all over the place. But, um, you know, those three will uh, most likely be in the top of our lineup. Um, uh, and so, and after that, you know, it's that's what's great about this season. There's been some kids that uh, played this last year, but, you know, they're so – 
many good players on our team that there's so much competition. And that's what this, this fall has been great. This winter will be huge for them to come back in January and, you know, see where everyone's at, because I think it's going to be big on matchups and how, you know, if this kid likes a low ball pitch or this kid likes a high ball pitch, then, you know, we're facing a high ball pitcher in this day, this kid might go, you know, so it, it's going to be very fun to see everyone um, be able to compete when we get back in January for those starting spots, because, you know, it's, it's kind of wide open a little bit, but uh, I know last year, uh, those three kids did really good for us, and we expect them to do good this next year as well. Do you feel you have more depth this year than you've had since you arrived there? Absolutely. Absolutely. Every every spot, you know, if you're not getting it done, it's kind of a next person up mentality. Uh, and I don't think that we really had that in the past, uh, which is really good for the, you know, this fall season is, you know, hey, if you're not getting it done, the person next to me will. If I'm not getting my extra work, uh, the person next to me will, and they're going to, uh, you know, pass me. So that competitive aspect that we brought in this fall has been huge uh, for our development. Your pitching staff improved massively uh, for last year from the year before. You've mentioned Coach Page, Page Parker, obviously. Uh, for those that don't know, former a national champion, Oklahoma great. Uh, we've had on the show as well. What impact, let's start with her, what impact has she had to the program uh, since her arrival there? Yeah, I mean, it's huge. Just having someone that's been there and done it, you know, these these players are able to ask questions that I don't think they ever have the opportunity to ask me, you know, or ask Coach A at time. But, you know, they they saw Paige uh, at the biggest stage win national championship. So those are things that they ask. Hey, what was your routine? What's it like when you're pitching here? What's your pitching there? But um, what she's done with the pitching staff has been incredible. Uh, and I think this year they're going to be even better. Um, what's great uh, is – now, you know, Coach A brought in and Paige brought in some uh, people that are able to do things differently. So we got a righty that spins it up, a lefty that spins it up, a righty that goes down at 70, a righty that goes down at 60, a lefty that can go up. And, like, there's different matchups and things that we're able to do. Um, it's not very one-dimensional. And I think, you know, Paige uh, has done a really, really good job with the pitchers, has prepared them. Um, has made them more competitive. And I think this year uh, you'll see them do really, really good because I know like, you know, Utah softball's identity has really, you know, been on pitching and defense, uh, especially, you know, Coach A's background. She's the infield coach. She's the defense coach, you know, and always called the pitches before. So, you know, pitching and defense is our staple. That's how we're going to win games. And that's something that I'm always trying to tell our offense is like, hey, Let's go win a game, uh, you know, with our bats. Let's go let the offense go win a game instead of, hey, let's do these, you know, uh, low-scoring tight games. You know, let's not put the pressure on our defense for our pitching. Let's go win a game for them. So, you know, I, I think the dimension that Paige has brought to this team has been incredible, not only on the field but off the field with the mindset stuff. Um, and just, you know, having these kids have the opportunity to, you know, ask questions to one of the best that's ever done it. <laughs> and it's it's definitely fun to go go work with her every day. And it sounds like they got more uh, – you like the depth of the pitching staff you have this year. Because I know it could get competitive, right? Like it's a little competitive there with your hitters against her pitchers from time to time at practice? I mean, you would say – yeah. But sometimes we just like get – oh, it's like, come on, guys. Like we need to – you know, I, I know our pitchers are good, but we need to do better, right? Yeah. So um, – and especially when Paige is calling the pitches against some of our hitters, like – it's like, man, like, good luck. You, you know, she just calls a really good game and, and knows our hitters really well that you know, she's going to put the pitchers in a really good spot to be successful, that's for sure. Uh, but, no, it's been super competitive. It's been super fun. And, you know, sometimes we got to put the pitchers in situations where it's tough on them. And, you know, we've really been able to see them respond. And same thing with the hitters. You know, sometimes things aren't going to go your way, but so what? <laughs> you know, you got to find a way to get better. So, uh, and I think that's something that we've focused on this fall and have done a really good job at. Yeah, I think a lot of people first took notice of the job she was doing that game against Oklahoma in the end of February, that yeah. two to one game, yeah. uh, which caught a lot of people's attention because you held Oklahoma to two runs, could have you know won that game. What was it like to be in that involved in that game on the opposite of dugout of <laughs> your brother 
and your and your mom it's a family gather but it's super competitive there what was that like yeah no it was it was fun i mean that's i've grown up in competing in everything that we do whether it's card games or basketball in the driveway you know uh you, you compete and so doing that don't really think anything of it i know my brother and I might have said, like, done a little hand signal about, like, oh, what the heck? You're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Something like that. But, um, no, it, you're just, you're in the moment. You're competing. You're trying to win the game. It doesn't really, you know, matters on the other side. There's another dugout. Like, yeah, it's kind of, it's really cool to, you know, see and, and be involved and do that. But, you know, at the end of the day, you want to win. And, you know, I always talk to my mom sometimes and say something about it. But, you know, we lost at the end of the day. So, yeah, it was close. It's great. But, you know, our mindset is it doesn't matter how close it is. You know, if you don't win the game, you know, there's some things you can learn and take positives, but we're here to win, you know, and and uh, we play them again this year. So that's that's going to be great. So, but I will not say too much on it because if there's anything you know about my mom, like anything you say or do will be used against you as a yeah. motivation for the yeah, team. I was say, yeah, yeah. She's an incredible coach. Oh. My brother's an incredible coach. So I'm, so I'm gonna. So what's the approach like in the pregame? Is there is a lot of chit chat, or do you just avoid them completely? What's the oh, no, no. I'm I'm the talkative one in the family. So okay. you know <laughs> that we got to share cages. So you know, as soon as our cage time was coming up, I went over, gave a big hug, you know, all that good stuff. So definitely broke the ice a little bit. Okay, so you're the one that's gonna break the ice, chit chat. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, I'm not the the quiet one. That's for sure. I'll go up and say something. But you say polite things. You're not doing trash talking, are you? No, no, no. I'm not, not in that position to do some trash talk. But if it's, you know, card games or shoot bat, like if it's something like that, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely talk some smack. But softballs. How competitive was it growing up in that family? How competitive was it? I mean, it's the thing about like, you know, our family, it's, it's very loud. You know, if you know my dad at all, he's, uh, he's, you know, He's the leader of the group, you know, and and he was uh, my mom and my dad, uh, collegiate athletes, you know, collegiate coaches, kind of have done it the, their whole life, and so that's exactly the environment JT and I were growing up in. It's around the field, it's playing games, it's you know, with the players, it's playing wall ball during the game, and maybe a ball goes on the field, like oh sorry mom, <laughs> you know, something like that. So, uh, I mean whenever we have family coming over friends coming over you know we're playing something so uh, it's not a lot of times are we just sitting down and talking and when it is it's it's, it's great it's fun um but knowing the gassos we got to play probably a, a game of uno that's kind of our our go-to game so. i was gonna say what was the non-softball game you would play unos huh that's the yeah, competitive uno, game. and then we'll play horse or some basketball Ooh. Yeah, my mom has a good shot, and then my wife was actually like the ex basketball player. So our first time like playing horse, she held her own, and so I think she got my parents' respect pretty quick, you know, because she was able to shoot some. I am terrible at basketball, <laughs> so I was not good. So she was holding her squad. So much. So Leaning on her, yeah, you, know, you gotta learn what you gotta do there. Yeah, uh, no, it's, it's fun. I will say that. I, it's competitive. It's all this, but at the end of the day, it's fun. It's just, it's fun. It's what we do. You know what I mean? You go yell at each other a little bit, go compete. All right, let's go eat dinner. You know, it's just kind of what we do. Was coaching just so you said earlier that coach was something you always wanted to do. It was just being around Patty, being around all that. It drew you in because you played baseball too. That was the other thing. Did you ever consider, well, I'll coach, but maybe I'll coach baseball, but you got into softball. Get me through that process. Cause for those that don't know, you play baseball. Yeah, yeah, I played, um, have kind of like my playing career was kind of crazy. Went to a bunch of different schools, you know, did the junior college route for a couple of years um, and then played at Bradley University in Missouri Valley, uh, graduated from there uh, and then finished up, started grad school at, at UCO, actually close to home. But, you know, throughout that whole time, I knew I wanted to be a coach and I knew that's what I had a passion for. Uh, whether it was going to be baseball or softball, I didn't know. Uh, but once I graduated, you know, I, I love softball. And baseball's fun. It's great. Uh, but I can't watch it anymore. It's too boring. It's slow. There's a lot of things to learn there. But, like, you know, it, it, the game like the game of softball, I think, fits my personality a lot more. It's fun. It's energetic. It's fast. Uh, you know, you get after it. And so that's more me. Um, 
and I knew kind of once I graduated that softball was the route I wanted to go. Uh, throughout my you know college career, I didn't really know, um, but you know, it's I, I love the sport, um, and I think you know baseball, softball. There's a lot of things that you can pull from both sports, uh, and when you you know are a coach and just learning the game, but you know energy, passion, uh, competitiveness. You know, you can really see that uh, in the sport of softball a lot more. And that's something that I, I love. Uh, and that's, you know, ultimately why I want to coach this sport for a while. And you grew up around it. So you, you probably got the bug, right? I mean, I mean you, yeah. you were probably at a dugout, you know, young age. You you were yeah. around the sport at a young age. What was that I, like growing up into the sport, really? Yeah, no, I was the bat boy. And when I was hungry, I'd go in the locker room and eat all the snacks, you know. And so, uh yeah, I, after school, I'd go to practice and just, you know, watch practice or go chat or help or maybe go hit or whatever it is. You know, I honestly don't really remember a ton of what I, like, did specifically. But, you know, just being around the sport, being at every practice and, you know, sometimes you get picked up late because practice, you know, was running a little late sometimes, you know. But uh, traveling with the team, um, going – you know, to Hawaii and, and different universities, uh, all the postseason games. I mean, shoot, growing up uh, at the Hall of Fame, you know, rolling down the berms. <laughs> you don't see those anymore, right? So, you know, it's it's definitely an experience that um, I'm grateful for. I know it's very difficult to uh, be a coach and, you know, raise the family and be there with the family all the time. So having the opportunity to uh, be around my family you know, at the field uh, has, has been incredible. And, you know, I hope uh, my son gets that opportunity as well. What's it been like for your being around your brother? Do you two talk softball when you're hanging out? Do you avoid talking softball? Uh, like, I'm always curious about that because you're around it all the time. So yeah. do you just try to turn it, you know, is there somebody in the family that says, all right, can we just turn it off and just not talk softball? Or is it the opposite? Is it just, just in your blood? So you have to talk about it. Yeah. He might hate me for this, by the way, but I mean, we're like, we're kind of different. I'm very like outgoing, talkative. JT's, you know, the smart one. And he's like, doesn't, is not going to be like, Hey, Hey, what's up? What's up? Uh, so I'm the one trying to go to him. Like, Hey, let's talk softball. What do you got? <laughs> hey, here, this, let's go hit. Let's Hey. Uh, and you know, I kind of had that opportunity as a GA and I don't think I really took full advantage of it at the time. Um, but you know, that's, that's our life. So a lot of what we do is on top. So, Hey, how are the games going? What's the team doing? I'm calling my mom for advice sometimes, um, you know, trying to pick my brother's brain as much as I can, but also, you know, there's a lot of relationships that I've built outside of the family from, you know, other coaches in the softball world, other coaches in the baseball world. And so I'll reach out to them and, and pick their brains too, because, you know, I think, uh, I've had a great opportunity of building a lot of great relationships, uh, meeting a lot of different people, um, different backgrounds and, and different ways of thinking and, you know, being able to pull things not only from my family, but, uh, you know, from I'm trying to think like off the top of my head, <laughs> like, you know, I mean, there's some from junior college, the D1 to pro baseball, you know, from high school baseball, from you know, junior college softball, two softball. I mean, there's a lot of different people that I've met uh, just because I talk so much, right? And I'm, I'm super friendly. So, you know, I build those relationships. And if I ever, you know, I'm looking for advice or need to know this or that, you know, I, I feel like I have a lot of people on my phone that I could call up and, you know, ask for some advice and they'll help me out. So, you know, having my family is great. Um, I always try and lean on them, obviously, a lot more. Uh, and we'll definitely talk about more personal things with them. Uh, but I feel like you know, God's blessed me with uh, the ability to be friendly, uh, the ability to make relationships with others. And uh, being at so many different places throughout my college career has really helped me build those relationships and, you know, uh, have resources all over. Well, and you mentioned, you know, you, you're married. Uh, your marriage uh, became a big topic in Oklahoma City two years ago uh because the world series oklahoma fs you got pushed back the world series got pushed back a day and then all of a sudden it was going to run close to your wedding date uh which caused a lot of stress 
uh, for Patty and brother yeah. JT. <laughs> Tell the audience your side of this story because she has told me her side of the story. But yeah. what was yeah, what was that like? Okay. Well, I think it all started with March Madness because when you looked at like the men's versus the women's March Madness setups, um, and like I think specifically the image I think of is like the weight rooms. I remember like Hutch tweeting about it, right? Yeah. And so I think that kind of put it on the map of like, hey, there's, you know, some inequalities here. Uh, and then once the softball World Series came about, never, I think, I don't know this for a fact, but I'm pretty sure like never in the history have they like pushed it back, right? So we're thinking, you know, this is after COVID. So you know, finding days for a venue is extremely difficult or you're going to have to push it back till next year. So it is super hard. So we're thinking, okay, I got to think about recruiting. I got to think, all right, Oklahoma in August, that's a no-go because I'm going to sweat way too much. You know, you don't want to do that on your wedding day. So, all right, June 11th, it's right after the World Series, like if necessary games on a Wednesday. You know, like ours is on the Friday or Friday, Saturday. Like we'll be fine. Like, you know, it gives us enough time. Well, you know, you got teams playing until like two in the morning, right? And you got all this rain delay stuff. And, you know, it's obviously for the betterment, like they needed to expand the World Series. They needed to push those games back and cancel them wait till the next day. It's the right thing to do. Uh, but from our perspective, it's like, what the heck's going on? This has never happened. Why is it happening? So, yeah, they, uh, they won the World Series on the F necessary game, which was, I want to say, rehearsal dinner you know so the next day uh was the wedding and you know my father-in-law kind of hey how about patty gas though with it so everyone you know at the weddings you know plotting boomer sooner all that good stuff so it was crazy i don't think you know everyone's been able to breathe and that was like a year ago right so it it was a very stressful time but you know the memories that were made that week are some that are going to last like that's incredible. Uh, they won that. And that was an afternoon Thursday, which probably helped her too. It was an afternoon game. The third, yeah, Thursday, Wednesday, I don't remember. I don't it was remember. an afternoon Thursday game. And I remember this because there were a lot of these softball people were mad because like, why well, isn't this in prime time at night? And then I find out later because of the wedding, it was probably a good thing it wasn't. Because yeah. uh, I think they literally took off. You know, they won the national title. You celebrate that. But on the other hand, you know, they got to take off, you know. Uh, was it like, was there any thought in your mind? Like, oh my goodness, what if like they can't make it? Like, would that ever cross your mind? It did. It definitely crossed my mind. We had the conversation. My mom was like, it's your wedding. I'm not going to miss it. JT might have to take over. <laughs> all right. I, I mean, all right. I mean, it was maybe mentioned like for a second, but I think, you know, the more you don't talk about it, it's kind of like not bring it up. Hopefully it doesn't happen. So yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was a crazy time, you know, but I remember watching them win the World Series on my phone, getting ready. We're like with my wife. We were getting ready for the rehearsal dinner and said, hey, well, look, like, there they are. They're winning it. And the next day, I got to see them in the hotel before the wedding. And that's, you know, usually we're there uh, being able to give them a hug on the field and, and do all that, you know. So it's a very special, emotional moment. Is you know, and I, I mean, I see it from – kind of the, the fan side, not the coaching side. You know, I, I grew up in the stands. So I was the one, you know, leading the Boomer Sooner chants. So I was the one with the painted face and the signs and had my buddies and, you know, hey, you guys do Boomer in the infield, we'll do Boomer in, uh, Sooner in the outfield and get it going like that. Uh, and so, you know, knowing how hard they work um, and the not emotional and just stress that they have to like be under, but also the sacrifice for the families, like my dad, like Andrea, um, it, it's a lot. And so being able to be there in that moment with them, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's incredible and it's really hard to describe what it's like. Well, you got to celebrate a wedding, you know, getting married and, you know, a national title all at once. So like, it was, uh, I feel like that's a story you all as a family will share forever. Like that's a, I'm just glad it worked out. I'm sure she was probably relieved when she got there. 
Uh, yeah. And maybe a part of her is like, don't ever try to get schedule a wedding rally. <laughs> yeah, okay. we'll give it a couple of years before we really start talking about it because it was, you know, <laughs> whoa, it, it's happening all right now. So, yeah, I appreciate you bringing that up. Well, it was an incredible story. She talked about it here on the show. It's just kind of wild. I mean, that's pretty wild, but I'm glad it all worked out. A uh, couple last things. One of the big stories this year in the Pac-12, obviously, is the Pac-12 tournament. First year that it'll be included. Uh, it'll be taking place at Arizona. Your thoughts on the Pac-12 tournament? Because as you mentioned, you know, last year you played Oregon State, talked about how significant that series was. Now it's a little different. Now you have a conference tournament with an automatic bid at stake. So what your reaction to having the tournament and how that maybe changes things down at the end of the year? Yeah, I think it's incredible, first and foremost, for the exposure. You know, I think, especially for recruiting, like you're going to have, you know, uh, people being able to drive out to Tucson and, and see some of the best softball in the country being played uh, and to have it as the first year uh, in a time like this, I think it's going to be incredible, not only for the players for that kind of post season experience feel, uh, but also for the fans, you know, what a product you're able to put on the field. I think it's going to be incredible. Uh, and it's going to be really, really fun to, you know, do the whole pack, uh, you know, have to make your adjustments have to do this different do that different against whatever team and then go in to a tournament and say hey like let's see what you got you know here are the adjustments that we made here's the campaign that we had before is this going to work is this not going to work you know i always kind of think of it from the x's and o's standpoint so i'm really uh looking forward and i know you know the team's looking forward to that challenge i think it's exciting i'm wondering as the coaches in the league you know, you see, for example, what the SEC teams have benefited from that conference tournament as far as hosting teams having a good conference tournament, get helping their resume. I would imagine it applies to the Pac-12 is the thinking as well, is it could help you maybe get more teams in because you get more opportunities, quality games in the tournament. But also, if you, you know, for teams that are in the mix to host, it's a chance to enhance your chances of hosting, right? Is that I'm sure that was also part of the, the thinking there when this all came to an agreement. Yeah, I think as the conference um, as a whole, I, I think it's just going to help, uh, especially, you know, a team like us last year. You win maybe a couple of games in that. Hey, you could be in or your resume looks a lot better. So, um, you know, hopefully we're not in a you know spot where we have to do that. Right. But I think just, you know, being able to compete against some of the best teams uh, in the country, that's what we look forward to. And, and I think that's what we're most excited about is, hey, we get the compete against the best a little bit more so you know don't look too far into it you know we try not to see the story or see this or that. it's just like hey let's just go play you know and it's gonna be really fun to do it against the best and that's that's gonna be my last question what is gonna be the keys for your team this year uh to accomplish your goals what are a couple key factors that you guys have to do to accomplish your goals yeah i think our pitching and defense are gonna lead us like you said before you know that's kind of what our identity's in and um, I think that's going to be big, especially late in the season. You know, I always say defense won championships, right? It's kind of hard that you see all the runs being scored nowadays, but, you know, one pitcher can take you a long way, I think. And I think the pitching staff that I know Coach A and Coach Page have created, it's going to be really good. Uh, but I think at the end of the day, it's, you know, our team believing that no matter who we're playing, no matter who's on the mound, who's in the box, you know, uh, what's across their chest like we can go in that game uh, and believe in that and and you know really playing fearless I think there's been times where hey, we're up on teams that maybe people didn't think that we're supposed to be up on oh my gosh you know like what's going to happen here and I think you know transitioning the process to hey we're up now let's go in the game you know it doesn't matter uh, who you're playing um, but it's just the way kind of how we play and how we think and you know really have the confidence to to go make that game change and play, I think it's going to be the huge difference. But also staying together, I think this team's really connected. I think we're really close. I've never seen, you know, a team this close, you know, on and off the field. Uh, they just, like, kind of pour into each other. They love each other in that way. And, you know, they're able to keep that. Every every season, every team, there's going to be some people that, you know, might not get the opportunities they wanted, and that might cause some, some controversy or some room or some talk, stuff like that, you know. And, I think we've done a really good job of addressing some things that have happened in the past. I think we've gotten really close this fall. And, you know, I'm really excited to see, you know, as one unit, no matter if you're playing, no matter if you're on the bench, what your role is, 
I, I think, you know, we're going to have one heartbeat this year. And I think if we're able to keep that, uh, we're going to be, you know, really good and can make maybe a run in the postseason, like, I don't know, Oregon State or, or Arizona. I mean, that's the goal, right? So, uh, you know, we're excited. Well, and you, you just saw football, what they were able to do. You mentioned defense. They shut down explosive USC offense, Kyle Whittingham and company to win the national title. So uh, you can feed off of that, right? I mean, you want your players to kind of see what the football players do and feed off yeah. of that. Hey, it's a good time to be a U right now. That's for sure. So Absolutely. Well, Coach, I appreciate you uh, taking the time uh, to talk to us here during the holidays here. Uh, we've been fans from afar. Congrats on the promotion. Well-deserved. Uh, we look forward to seeing your team on the field. Send our best to Coach Hogue and Coach Parker. We're fans as well. And uh, thanks for taking the time uh, to talk to us. I appreciate you having me on. You know, I was, you know, first-time caller, long-time listener, <laughs> I feel, you know. So, you know, I appreciate everything you do for the sport. Um, just everything that you do is, is awesome, and uh, you do a great job, and I love listening, and keep it up, and hopefully we'll talk soon.